if you will mute yourself and please come off mute anytime you have a question. But um, my name is Kelly Cottle. Um, I think at least one of you sent something to Miss Kelly Cottle. Um, don't worry about it. I blame my parents both for being a male and also for my name. Um, so uh, I'm not turning my camera on today because I am sitting at home in a um, arm sling with a fairly large shirt over the top of it where I broke, I fell last, well, two weeks ago, yesterday, and severely broke my right arm. Uh, I am a spinal cord injury victim from four years ago, so if you ever meet me, you'll notice that I move weird. Um, it's because I don't really have feeling, full feeling from the, um, the neck down. Hold on one second, folks. I apologize, but just like that right there, um, I'm sitting here, I'm getting, I got cold for some reason. And when I get cold, I'll start to shiver. And if I start to shiver, I'll start to spasm. And then I will be in big time pain. So um, I had to go get me a little blanket, sorry. Um, but that's why I don't have camera on. When, when things get back to normal, when I'm healed up a little bit, I will be back at the office and we'll be, have the camera on and let you see my ugly mug. Um, but this is me, I'm Kelly Caldwell. I've been with the Cisco Networking Academy program for over 20 years. Um, we have been a Cisco Academy at Stanley Community College for a very long time. So uh, we are a, an academy support center and an instructor training center. So we are both. Um, and so we provide both support services and training. We actually support uh, over 170 Cisco Academies throughout the Southeast and actually throughout all of North America. So we pretty much support um, everywhere throughout, the, throughout North America. We actually run, if you've noticed on our, uh, our class, one of the things I will show you, if you're ever interested in our ASCITC, to go to Stanley Community College and notice we're too small for the E. So we can't afford the E. Um, but if you go to ASCITC under future students, you'll see information about our, our two different signs here. But I always show the ITC because this is where our training schedule will always be. So have any other folks who are interested in taking classes, um, our training schedule is here. Uh, and every semester we do offer uh, three CCNA classes, the ITC classes for the CCNA. You are in an introduction to networks, which means more than likely you've never been in a Cisco uh, instructor class before. However, you may have actually been in IT Essentials. And if you have, one of the things I want you to do is make sure when you redeem that C token, you say you already have a Netacad account. You also, if you were a student at one time and you have a Netacad account, you actually can redeem that C token using your old student account. Uh, and then you'll be able to actually eventually have an account be given the instructor privileges. We'll talk more about how to get instructor privileges on an account uh, at an academy as we move forward. Um, but just want to show you that so you're aware of who we are, what we do. We're a small school, like I said, uh, about 40 miles out of outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. If you're familiar with uh, North Carolina, that puts us pretty much directly in the center of the state uh, of North Carolina. Now, we have a little, and it's always the beginning of class is always a little confusing. So if you've been a little confused, don't worry about it. That happens um, because we have three different primary sites we're going to use for the class. And in fact, there's really just two primary sites we're going to use. And then the first site is what I have to use for um, the campus to prove that you quote, attended the class and did the first assignment. So your first site you've been to is canvas.stanley.edu. I sent out directions on how to log in uh, and how to get Canvas information. I don't know who is not unmuted. If you will, please mute yourselves. Um, but um, that initial site though, which is right here, you will have seen your course, which is the net 3,100 You go in here. All right. I'm going to mute Thomas. Thomas, if you need to talk, let me know and I'll unmute you. But as I muted you so I could, I could uh, get rid of the background noise there. Um, but this particular site here, Canvas, the only thing you're really going to do here is this introductory assignment. And this is so that I can have, quote, proof that you attended class. 
uh, within the census date. Uh, I do have a link that will take you over to netacad.com, but once you've done the introductory assignment here, you really won't be using the canvas.stanley.edu site very much. Uh, it is just to get you started and prove attendance. Our second site is the one that's gonna be your most important site, and this is netacad.com. This site is where you will be enrolled in the primary class site with all the class content. You will uh, have received this morning your seat tokens and directions on how to um, redeem your seat tokens. So those seat tokens are available to you and you just go in and use the directions to redeem them. And once you do, you will be enrolled in and on your page. Now it could be that you are a main contact and also uh, an instructor and also taking classes. So you may, if you don't see your class, just make sure you're on your I'm learning tab, okay? Because if you're a main contact, you'll have I'm managing and I'm learning. And if you're also already got the instructor role, you'll have the I'm teaching tab. So you will need to be on your I'm learning tab. Now, of course, I'm teaching this course. So it's your class is under my I'm teaching tab. And you'll see your class is labeled as ITN V7, so Introduction to Networks version seven, in instructor training course. KFC is my initials. Uh, by the way, so um, I just, it's not a chicken class, it's just my initials. And then fall 2020. So this is your course that you will be able to go into. Inside of this course, you will see uh, the main components of our course for the semester. Your primary place you're gonna work out of is going to be this modules item right here on the left. So this is the home tab. You really could just click right here on modules and stay in modules. Uh, and I can actually make that the primary landing page, but typically I leave it like this so that you just, the second you come in, you're gonna go to modules. Now, underneath the modules tab, you will see a couple things. First time in this course, uh, it would do well for you to read this. It talks about what the course is, uh, what the basics are. This course, by the way, uh, is a basic introduction to networks uh, with additionally basic configuration of Cisco devices, such as Cisco switches and Cisco routers. Um, we're gonna get into what IPv4 and IPv6 are, including subnetting of both. We'll go into the differences between types of networks, um, the different models like the OSI model and TCP IP model. Um, a lot of times people, even with a good networking background, find that this class helps them fill in the missing parts that they um, just may not have known about the, the basics of networking. Now, if you are a networking expert and have been doing networking for years and years and years, a lot of this may be reviewed for you. Um, but the beauty is you're also gonna be going through this class and you'll see it exactly the way that your students are going to see it so that you are able to, um, you're able to make sure that you are aware of the little gotchas and things that, that, that take place. All right, now, back over here on modules. You also see course content. Now, this course content, when you click on Introduction to Networks, here's your textbook, folks. This is where you are going to be able to read the content for this class. So under modules again, course content, you'll click on it and you'll load the course content. And it will open a new window and it will load the content for this particular class. Now in this class, uh, again, there are 17 different modules that are available. Now be aware, these are not chapters, they're modules. People freak out a lot of times and go, wow, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but each module, some of them are pretty short. Some of them like the number system uh, module is a very short module. These, uh, this area is where you'll begin your reading this is your textbook. You do not have a required textbook for this class. In fact, I've got something very special to share with you next week once we've got all the bugs worked out um, about a, a special database I'm gonna give you access to through Stanley. In fact, I will show you that here in just a little bit, um, but you will have access to a, a special database that's gonna give you access to um, the CERT guides for CCNA. So you can use those as additional material you're not required to purchase a book for this class at all. So you'll notice here, the good thing about each one of the modules, it starts out with what are you gonna learn in this module? 
In this case, module one is simply what networks are and how they affect our lives, some of the new things going on in networks like IoT and BYOD. And then you just click forward and you read the content. Okay, now this, the classes are interactive, so there are actual uh, videos inside of it. Uh, I do like the fact too, as you move forward in these modules uh, and you get to certain areas, there are drag and drops, there are little quizzes at the end of certain modules so that you can check your understanding like this. Really good that at the end of a module you do your reading and then you check your understanding, okay? So which two devices are intermediary devices? A router and a switch would be an intermediary device. When, which data, when data is encoded as pulses of light, what media is being used? Optic cable, which is the following is the name of all computers connected to the network that participate directly in network communication intermediary device and you check it oh got that wrong what did i do here oh computers sorry hosts pay attention so each one of the different modules has those types of check your progress check your understanding which are really good um, the other thing if you ever have a problem seeing a particular uh, picture you can click on it and it enlarges it so anytime you see the plus on an image you can click on it to make it bigger so it's easier to read. Now, one of the things I'm going to tell you is I don't babysit you in terms of um, assignments, in terms of your reading. What I'm gonna tell you to do is this. Read chapter one for next week. I'd go ahead and read actually chapters one and two for next week. And then when you get done reading those, read chapter three and four and find module four, five, six. Basically, you're expected to read all of these modules and um, I'm not gonna come back to you and say, hey, have you read this module, read this, read that. Just realize that the modules are going to be there. And once you finish reading module one, just go ahead and start reading module two and work your way through. This is again, our main reading. So I'm gonna go back and show you again where to get it. So you go to modules, you go to course content, introduction to networks course, click there, and then you would open up the course content. I want to stop for a second and ask if there are any questions about this, about course content. None so far. No, okay. Well, I want to show you another item here under modules. Inside of each module item, I have your assignments. Those assignments are made up of the packet tracer activities that I will ask you to do and the labs I will ask you to do. These are your upload areas. So this says retrieve the packet tracer activity from 157 or the click and complete it per instructions. Now, unfortunately, these links have not been working. Well, actually they did work that time. Um, you need to, the big thing here is when you try to click on this link, you must have already opened the curriculum once. So you had to have opened the curriculum through that load the course content. If you don't, you will get a message saying access denied when you try to click on this link to go to the Packet Tracer. But Packet Tracer is a special simulation program that you're gonna be able to download. And it allows you to uh, do all kinds of neat things. Uh, it is, it's the simulation portion of this course. In fact, there's an entire intro to Packet Tracer um, course that I can put you in. It's about an eight hour course if you're interested. Um, it's something that's really good for your students. But you'll see this is a simulation tool. And when you open up your downloaded Packet Tracer activity, it will give you directions on what you need to do in order to complete the activity. Now, some of these activities are what I call look and see activities. It runs you through a series of things and as you look at different items. Um, some of them, by the way, you do have to log in with Packet Tracer. And it's in one. You have to log in using your Netacad ID. So whatever your normal Netacad login is. So you have to put that in in order to get access to Netacad. Oops. 
And folks, I am trying to type one-handed, so that's another reason that my messages are going to be pretty short inside of the emails I send you and things, because again, my I can barely, really can't even move my right arm um, much at all. I don't suggest shattering your arm off at the at the socket. By the way, it's it's not not a, not a good thing. But this tells you here it's a network network representation. You can see how detailed this is. Um, now most of your your networks you're not gonna not gonna do this much in terms of building it for yourself, but it just goes through and talks to you about what packet tracer is, tells you the difference between lands and WANs, some challenge questions. So how many lands do you see? If there are questions inside of a packet tracer, just take a, a Word document or a Notepad document, answer those questions, and upload them with your packet tracer file. So if I was completing this, I would do all the parts for this packet tracer. And then for this assignment, I would simply go file, save as, I'd put in my name. So in this case, I'm just gonna put in KFC, okay? Save it. And then now, since I've completed this assignment, I will upload it here in this packet tracer upload, which is under again, modules. And then it's in the module for module one. Now, I don't have due dates at this time. I'm gonna put those in tomorrow. One thing I want you to be aware of is I put due dates in for one reason, because if you're like me and there's no due date, you'll push it off and push it off and push it off. At least the due dates will give you a framework from which to work in. Um, be aware, I don't freak out if you miss a due date. You are all instructors, you're all adults, you are working full time, you're teaching full time, I understand if you miss a due date here or there. So don't worry about that. Just be aware that once I put these due dates in, it's just if you hit those milestones, you should be able to finish the class by the time the class ends on December 9th. So again, the due date will actually be right here once I get it put in, uh, and then you will be able to see it also when you first log in, they'll be on the right hand side. It will tell you what is due for this week or what is coming up. Okay. By the way, if you ever want to, I could actually put a due date in here or I could do it with uh, the calendar. And I'll show you how to do some of that stuff later as we move forward because some of the things I do try to show you in this course is how to manage your course as well as learn the material. So each module will have packet tracer activities and they will have labs. Now, some of the labs are just written labs like this particular lab here is a um, just a lab that requires you to write in information. So in other words, you just go in and you look, research networking jobs. So you go in here and you can open this. Now this is a PDF, but you can download this and open it in Word and then place uh, your Word information in and upload it as a Word document for me. So again, I don't know if many of you are aware of this, but you can always download a PDF and then that PDF, you can actually just open it up in Word in any modern version of Word. Oops, sorry, again, it's hard. I'm, I'm working the mouse with the wrong hand upside down, so. Um, ah, let me do it this way and make it even easier. I'll, just, I'll cheat. So you can open Word. And and Word will convert it to a uh, Word document. And then you can just fill in your answers. Now, one of the things I do ask is when you fill in your answers, so when you enable editing, when you actually answer the questions, um, please do type it with like a blue text or a green text or just some different color text than black. That way I can easily find your, your answers. Um, that just makes it a whole lot easier for me when I'm doing my grading and something you will want your students to do when you're doing grading also, so. Okay, so those items are our hands-on labs that require uh, either writing, but there's also other labs. Now folks, we have one more system I wanna show you that you will be getting access to. Now, on 
The neat thing about this new version of CCNA version one, which is CCNA one version seven, is that we get into hands-on very quickly. So in fact, in chapter two, you've already got a lab on how to do basic switch and end, end device configuration. Now, packet tracers use the simulation packet tracer. Our labs are gonna use your final system here that we're gonna talk about, which I have not given you access yet to, but I will tomorrow, and that is your netlabs.stanley.edu site. This site right here, gives you hands-on access to real gear. So when I click log in here, and I've got some videos I'll send you about how to do reservations and how to do everything, uh, because we really won't need this until later next week. But once you're inside of NetLabs, you're gonna be in a single class. So you're gonna be able to do a lab reservation, so lab for myself. And you will be in a single class. I'm in a hundred different classes because I'm in so many different things at the school. But inside of your class, you're gonna see AE CCNA 1 version 7 MDP. This is multi-device pod. Your class, when you click on that, you will see the labs that are available for you to do. Okay. Now, for instance, you'll see the lab 292 is right here. So if I click on lab 292, I can then schedule a lab on one of our pods. Now, please notice, this is extremely important. It looks like there's only four pods. However, if you click this little arrow right here on the right, we've actually got 11 pods or actually, yeah, that's right, 11 pods that are available for you to use. Pod one or pod two through 12. So we've got 11 different pods, 10 pods, excuse me, 10 different pods. So make sure if all the pods are in use in the first four, just go out and find you another pod out here. The red line, okay, my internet, my internet connection went unstable there, so if I broke up, I apologize. But the red line right here is right now, the current time. If I wanted to schedule a lab for right now, I can just click here. I can schedule for up to four hours. Now be aware, um, one of the things it takes about 10 minutes for the pod to load because the, this is real gear. In the last 10 minutes, you will lose access to the pod as the pod goes through a process of cleaning it up for the next student. So that will be uh, available with, with all the different VMs and the, the routers and switches will be cleaned off. So give yourself, if you think the lab is going to take you an hour, I would schedule it for no less than an hour and a half. Um, so I just did two hours, 52 minutes, click submit. Now at this point, I will now have a lab reservation that shows up that's actually available for me to enter. Now, it is important to note, if you have time this weekend and you know you're gonna have time this weekend to do some labs, or you wanna do some labs later on in the uh, next week, you can actually schedule your labs you know, in the future. So I could go in here and say, I wanna schedule something for uh, Saturday the 12th so I can go out in the future and, and you know, get the pods for when I want them and when I need them. Please just be aware that if you make a reservation, try to use it. Uh, we have about 500 students using this system during COVID-19. Um, I've shared it with a lot of schools across the Southeast, um, trying to make sure that they have access to real gear uh, during this pandemic when we're all working from home. So uh, if you do schedule something in the future, so I'm just gonna schedule something here just a quick thing to show you. So I schedule something for Saturday for two hours. And you'll notice the difference between these two reservations. Reservation 16787 is in the future. So it's on 912 at 8 a.m. This one is currently ongoing. Now, if I decided or found out that, hey, I'm not gonna be able to do this reservation because something's come up for Saturday, just try to go in there, click on it and cancel that reservation. That just ensures that the pod's not being held for a reservation that you're not even going to attend. Okay. So now we'll click here though, enter lab. And you'll notice we have real gear sitting here. We have two switches. Okay. Now right now this switch is booting, so I can't do anything with it. So switch one is currently booting. If you've ever seen a Cisco router or switch boot, this is the process where it's loading the iOS from, uh, from flash. Same thing over here on S2, S2 is doing the same. PCA is a virtual machine that has booted up or is in the process of booting up. 
and PCB is doing the same. Now, here's probably one of the most important things about the NetLabs labs. It is extremely important that you use the content from inside NetLabs whenever you do a lab. So even though the course module here, if you click right here, in fact, I'm gonna get rid of this one because I was copied from our seated course, but even though when I click here, it takes me to the, you know, it says, okay, go here to page 292. Right here's the, the lab document. Do this lab right here. Do not use this document because you'll notice it does not have the all important updated for NetLab Plus. The ports may be different. There may be some other things different. For instance, there's one whole section in this first uh, chapter or first um, class where it's uh, entire section is removed about wireless from one of the labs because NetLabs doesn't support wireless. So make sure when you're doing a lab inside of NetLabs, you use this document, okay, which is a um, PDF. I do have some Word documents I've converted on these. I'll try to grab those and uh, just put those in the class and I'll let y'all know when I do that. But begin, notice it's still booting. Here's the switch. You know, it's been booting now for about five minutes or so, but it's, it's trying to get there and you'll notice it's the system performing automated operations. So there's nothing I can do at this point. It's ensuring the switch is clean, that there's nothing on it that would mess up the lab. And it's going through just doing all its And here in a second, I'll get control of it. Okay, now I have control of it and you will see that this is a fully working real Cisco switch. This is not a simulation. Um, this is a Cisco switch running version 15 uh, of the iOS. It's a Cisco 2960. Our routers inside of these pods that you'll be working on are gonna be 4300s, 4, 4200 routers. Okay. So and then both switches are up. And again, you now can go in and build this lab. So the PC, excuse me, works just like a regular PC. No different. So you'll be able to go in, you'll be able to go in the control panel, set IP addresses or however you want to do it. You can also go down here and you can click on the network um, and open your network settings and make changes to the PC. Uh, just like you would if you were working on a non-virtualized PC. The PC on the back, this whole system on the back end maps VLANs and all to make this PC appear as if it's on port FA06, and this PC makes it appear as if it's on FA018. And then there's a single trunk line, well not trunk right now, but a single link between S1 and S2 on 0101. So that folks is where you will do your hands-on lab. So whenever in the modules, if it's a lab that requires equipment under the labs item for a module, you will do that inside of NetLabs, okay? Any questions about NetLabs? And you'll have some more as we get closer and do more with it, but any questions at this point about NetLabs? On the um, the packet tracer, mm -hmm. um, you said to if we had any questions on there to put them in a Word document and answer yep. them there and then send them in upload. with up, upload them with the packet tracer. Yes. Okay. Because well, the reason you can do that will that is, take two? Yep. I uh, on these uploads, I have it set to where you can upload more than one uh, more than one document. Okay. You can definitely do that. Okay, good question. Do you have to submit some kind of results from labs? Typically, no. The labs uh, will actually capture every single thing that you type in, Harbender. So um, I do have you submit the document. And if there's any questions, convert the document to Word and answer the questions inside of the lab documents. So many of the lab documents have, like, what is the status of port FA018 now? And I'd like for you to fill that in. So I do want you to upload the completed Word document at the end, but as far as like configuration files and those types of things from the devices, 
No, that's one of the beauties of NetLabs is when you're finished with a lab, I can actually go in and look at every single keystroke that you put in on, on the devices. Okay. But yes, uh, Caleb, Caleb's question is very valid. You can, you can upload multiple different items inside of each upload. So you would upload for the packet tracer, the PK file, and the little notepad or Word document that's got the answers to the questions. Well, my guess is that the instructions are very explicit about what to upload. Is that correct? Uh, on all these, pretty much what I put in is, yeah, upload a screenshot of the assessment items to display. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much with the packet tracers, it's going to be just the completed PKA and then any of any other questions that are there. So when you do the packet tracers, it, it'll, it'll make sense. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Now, here's a good question. Where do I get Packet Tracer? You can get it from under your modules, under student resources, Packet Tracer resources, okay? This is also where you can do the introduction to Packet Tracer course, which is a quick free course. I'd also just click right here, Packet Tracer resources, and this will let you download Packet Tracer, okay? So we're in version set, we're in one CCNA seven. So you really need to use uh, version 7.3.0 or higher. So the newest version 7.3.1, so download it. Okay. So that is available again under student resources. Now, one thing I'm gonna ask, you're welcome to do this introduction to Packet Tracer course by uh, clicking there. But also, um, if you want to do it, I can actually put you in the one that's under Stanley and that will help us um, because under my IT Academy page, by the way, we teach a, a large amount of online courses and about everything from VMware to AWS to, to Red Hat. But under my free classes, I actually have a, an introduction to Packet Tracer uh, open enrollment class that you can go in and take. And if you would use this, you're interested in doing that introduction packet tracer class and if you enroll this way using um, um, using our uh, our class it will actually help my college because it will show you uh, as helping attend or attending in our academy so if you could if you are going to do the, the free uh, packet tracer class it's just a 10 hour self-paced course um, let me know and I'll put you in that or send you this link so that you can uh, you can help us out with enrollment. There's some Cisco tracks and it just, it's good for us. Okay. So. Kelly. Yes. Did you say it's a 10 hour course? Yes. Can we go into it and come out and, you know, do it a little bit at a time? Oh yes. Yes. You can do it. You can do. And if you, if you do five hours of it and feel comfortable with it and don't want to do any more, that's fine too. But yeah, you can, you can go in and out of it. And it's just teaching the tool of the packet tracer, which I understand to be just a learning tool. It's not an industry thing, right? Correct. Yes, it's just a learning tool. And it's, okay. it's, one, of the, it's one of the primary instructional tools that we use in the Cisco Networking Academy. So it is very, very important to learn that tool. Yes, I see that. Um, one other question. You mentioned a course that some may have taken before this. Is that of the old series or is that still part of seven it essentials is um the a plus course gotcha. so, yeah it essentials is the a plus course um and the, you know some people take it first because they're already teaching in cet and then they move into a computer engineering and then they move into teaching networking what's the equivalent of the 188 is that is that what you're referring to of the cisco course i think it's 188 188 um, Not well, it was below 200 at any rate. I actually taught it one semester in a pinch and it was just hardware concepts. That's, that's IT essentials. Okay. That's and is there a certification for that? Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, one of the things you can do, uh, under, uh, if you're logged into Netacad, you can go to resources, course resources, and it should show you a listing of all the courses that are available inside of Netacad. Um, and IT Essentials is uh, right here. IT if Essentials. we haven't had that, should we 
it looked like pretty simple material. Should we take that before this one? Um, I, I would. I wouldn't worry about it. With most of the, all the backgrounds that I've seen uh, in our introductions in in Canvas, none of you are going to have a problem. This is more uh, teaching towards how to how to be a, a hardware technician, and it actually does map to the A plus certification. And but to teach this in a college, would we have to have that instructor module? No, it? no, no. No, typically, typically your CET or computer engineering people will be teaching IT essentials, and then you have your networking instructors will be teaching the networking side. So you'll be teaching on the networking side. Gotcha. Now, if you wanted to, if if your goal is to get, if you're not currently working or you want to ensure that you're going to have a job at a community college or even a university, more of a community college and university, um, having IT essentials as especially the instructor accreditation will never be a bad thing because um, it gives you more courses you can teach. Uh, but it's not a required component to take before you take the, the networking. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to go back full time. I took about a year and a half off after retirement. So I didn't know if that would be a good course, the 188. Um, but it sounds like this is going to get me into a curriculum. This, I think this will be, yeah, th this will be better to get you started, get you in and get your CCNA stuff done. And then you'll be ready to, you know, to move forward. And if you decide at that point, so there's a lot of branching paths too. I mean, one of the things you could do, you may decide that instead of, you know, the 188 or the IT essentials, you may decide you want to do cyber ops associate. You know, you may want to do cyber ops. You may want to do CCNA DevNet, which is just a release. Um, I see. Yeah, that associate. So, you know, and they would all be kind of satellite for these initial three courses. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And then one more question, just because I think it's relevant. Did I read right that there are only three courses now instead of four, like in the version six? That, that is correct. series. That that is correct. There are now three CCNA courses instead of four. Um, okay. I'll also tell you that I passed the CCNA version seven exam a couple months ago, um, and it is not as rigorous as it used to be. Um, the time limit's tough, but other than that, the, the the rigor I think is a little less. And I think you'll notice that as we go through the curriculum, they don't cover things to the depth they used to before. Um, a lot of the topics <laughs> into uh, CCMP Enterprise Core. Hey, hey, Kelly, I got a question. Okay, go ahead. This, this is Ken. Um, I got my CCNA, but it's been years ago, six or seven, and I guess that's the reason they're sending me back because, I mean, I, I haven't really taught networking for a long time, and now they're asking me to, and it's fine. But I, I, um, after the first course, can we sit for one of the certifications? You might have covered it, and I've, I've got another conference going on at the same time. Could you tell me what can we do after the first course? No, you cannot. The, the way the, the new CCNA exam is designed is um, you need to finish all three courses before you take uh, the CCNA. Um, okay. So you take one and two and you can take your CSENT. Um, there's no longer a CCENT. There's no longer a CSENT certification. Um, once you finish one and complete it, the good news is you're then accredited to teach CCNA one or introduction to networks version seven immediately. So okay. You, the good news is you take it, complete it, I credit you, you can teach it. Um, now, as far as actual certification, you're going to have to complete all three if you want to, you know, prepare fully to take the exam. Yeah, I'd like to do that down the road. But, yeah, I, I was just wondering because, again, it's been years since I've since a lot of the stuff I'm familiar with, but some of it's new. So, okay, thank you. No problem. And I want to show – any other questions? Keep, keep them coming. Those are good questions. Yeah, one one more. For that um, earlier course, I was calling it 188. I don't know what you were calling the essentials. IT, IT essentials. Are we able to just sit for that exam? It's pretty simple material in there. Uh, we do have the ability to do what's called a, um, a fast track uh, if you have the certification. So if you already have your, your certification um, in, um, in A+, so if you've got a current A+, certification, we can actually do what's called a fast track exam and you don't have to take the full course. Um, same with CCNA, we, we do, but with CCNA, you have to take a special hands-on test using my NetLabs. And if you don't pass, then you will, um, 
you basically have to you have to take the course. Um, so there are you can fast track if you have a current valid certification, CCNA or higher, or with IT Essentials A plus. And so, yeah, I don't have any of that. I'm just starting back with networking. Okay. Is there one of those courses going on now for instructors? IT Essentials, yes. It started uh, today, yesterday, also. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? I want to show you all again. Let's uh, go back to sharing my screen because I want to show you. Um, make sure we're clear here. I'm going to go back over one more time. Remember, canvas.stanley.edu, that was just our initial login site where you did your introductory assignment. Netacad.com is our main class site. This is where you're going to read the course content under the modules item and also where you will have your modules that we'll be covering. I'll go ahead and tell you right now uh, for next week, read and complete or work on, at least work on uh, modules one and two. And I will lecture on those and we will actually uh, um, talk about those in class next week. I'm going to bump this class meeting probably back 30 minutes because I have one instructor who has a class until 3.30 every day. Um, so we'll probably do 3.30 to 4.30 from here on out for our class meeting. Um, but we're going to, that's your assignment for next week. And then this final one, this netlabs.stanley.edu, I'll send you your login information for this tomorrow. You do not currently have the ability to log into this. I will send it to you tomorrow and we'll get you going inside of there. The final item I want to show you is something I'll be giving you access to as soon as we get the bugs kind of cleared up on it. Uh, we recently purchased this and it's an amazing resource for you. But as a student at Stanley, you, you have access to a database called O'Reilly Media Database. Um, and if any of you have used, um, let's see if Stanley's in here, hopefully we're in here now. I don't know if we're showing up. Nope, so. I gotta get the. Where'd it go? They haven't got us in here yet. I don't have the direct link. Dad, give it. Hold on. There's actually supposed to be a way just to say not listed. Not listed. Okay, now I put in my email, which for me is this. And you will put in your Stanley email, which is your Stanley Community College email that you have, which is that Stanley email. And then you're going to have access to this. And so you're going to have a, you will have your own profile. This is where we're having a little bit of a glitch right now. We're trying to figure out how to, to get this fixed. But you will actually have the ability. So like, here's an entire playlist. So let's do, let's go in here and do CCNA, CCNA. And you can see here, here's the official CERT guide volume one. And so you will actually be able to just start reading this material. So you're gonna have access to Wendell Odom's CERT guide. So as long as you're in the class or as long as you have a Stanley student, uh, email, which you keep out a year from the time you, you get your, you take our classes, you're going to have access so that you can, can read these materials. So you'll notice that it's the entire book, Cisco Press book. Uh, you're also going to have the ability down the road to actually save this as part of your history, which we have here. And let's do CCNA, including up to and including even, there are some video titles in here. So here's the Kevin Wallace, 200-301. And so if you want to start the live lessons, there's 16 hours of videos in here you'll be able to actually use. Um, so, but pretty neat stuff. Very useful. Uh, again, we're working the bugs out on it, uh, but it's something that the Riley Media Database is going to be pretty, pretty phenomenal. Uh, for everyone once we get it up and running. We got just a couple little things we got to get worked out, um, but we'll have it have it going for you before this class is, is over. Definitely, probably in the next week or so, we'll have it uh, hopefully fixed up. All righty, folks, I don't have anything else. That's all I have for today. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna ask you for any questions you may have, and I'll actually stop 
recording. That way you can ask any questions you didn't want to ask while the recording was on.